Well, to top off our show today, I've got an exercise that you can do at home to build your intuitive skills. So let's get our psychic knuckles cracking. <laughs> Since we were talking about clairvoyance today, I thought I'd talk about some methods of development. There are lots of ways that you can develop your clairvoyance. One simple way is to just start playing I spy with yourself. If you ever played that as a kid or play that now, you know, I spy a cow, I spy the color red, and you just sort of pick an object or a color or maybe a feather, the number eight, and you just decide that you're going to see how many times you can see it. It's opening your awareness in a physical dimension that helps your awareness in a non-physical dimension. So that's kind of a fun game that you can play with yourself, and it's easy and does help. If you want to develop your clear audience, you could make flashcards for yourself. One of the best ways that I heard to develop your clear audience was to use flashcards. You can buy inexpensive ones around and about or for children or print them off the internet and just test yourself. What's on the other side of that? What number is there? What color is there? What president is there? That's another way to develop that. There are a lot of ways that people have developed their clairvoyance. I will say that there are a lot of ways that people have connected to other realms and had experiences out of their body while living. Many of these are completely not recommended. It's important to maintain a simple, clear, unadulterated state of mind when you're having a true clairvoyant experience or working in spirit. And these are ways that are not recommended, uh, intoxicating drugs, inhaling stupefying fumes, whirling until the vertigo renders you unconscious, sacrifices that are made to call in powers or black magic, self-hypnosis. That's not necessarily bad when it comes down to getting over a clinical issue, but not good for working in spirit. Other people hypnotizing you and trying to transfer their gift. If anyone tells you, sit with me or sleep with me or whatever, and I can give you my gift, that's one to walk away from. And regulating your breath to the point that it starts creating a physical problem for your body so that you start hallucinating, not a good way. I kind of think that if you have to join a secret organization where you take a vow and don't talk about what you learn inside of it, that's probably not the best way either. So again, these are ways that you can open your intuition, but they are certainly not recommended. The main reason is, is that they leave you too open or vulnerable to outside influences. And I mean influences not just in this dimension, but in the other I really feel like the best way to develop your clairvoyance or any of your psychic gifts is, first of all, to set your intent. And you want to set your intent to a moral high ground, if you will. C.W. Ledbetter that I mentioned in the first half of the show says that you should enter with all your energy upon the path of moral and mental evolution. He and I both believe that the best practice is meditation and or sitting with a developed medium that exemplifies the gift of love, which is, of course, the highest gift. And you can tell whether somebody's a good person or not by how you feel around them. Do they have a healing energy? Are they compassionate? Do they offer you comfort or counsel? If those things are true, you're probably good to go to study with someone. It's those egos and arrogant people that you need to look out for. But on your own, set that intent. You know, energy follows focus. It's really important to suit up when you go into the psychic realm. Of course, you can develop your own gift. And my suggestions are this. They're kind of step by step. Number one, clear the space. Dedicate the space. Clear it of any negative energy and dedicate it to only the highest vibrations of truth, light, love, peace, knowledge, wisdom, healing, and understanding. And then ground yourself. Mother Earth is our physical connection. 
and we're kind of antennas of Mother Earth. So just let your ego and your intellect drop off into the Mother Earth. Reinforce your connection to the Earth. That's grounding. And after you've grounded, number three, connect with the highest realms. Some people like to think of it as Father Sky or our spiritual connection or the divine or God, however you wish to go, as long as it's upward and light and love. You would ask your guides for their protection. And it doesn't have to be anything floral and intricate. It can just be something like, I'm going in, protect me. I know you've got my back. Thank you. You know, something simple. And so you connect to those highest realms And then you just relax. I often use a CD called The Ultimate Ohm or Sacred Drums, A Shamanic Journey, or Singing Bowls or Native Flute Music, just because it's nice to have a background. You don't need one. And then once you're relaxed, you set your intent. Maybe you want to travel and meet your guides, or maybe you want to deepen your gifts or whatever your journey is. And so you work and experience that. That's number five. And then number six, you would close your energies back after you finish working by pulling your auric field back towards you and kind of reground. You want to make sure that you close your energies. And you can do it. Just trust your guides and angels. They're there for you. You might not even know who they are, but it's okay because they are there. So just talk to them. They're there.